Hey, dear Tyler. Good morning. How are you doing? Um, how have you been? I really hope you're fine. I hope you're good. I took an extended break, an extended, extended break, and I, I think I'm glad that I did. Um, it's been like over a month. I know that I was meant to just do like two weeks, but this month uh, period has been very, very helpful for me. I've had to handle quite a number of projects recently, and it's been pretty tasky, right? So it's taken a whole lot of my commitment. And so gradually, you know, ticking off the boxes for the projects that I've been handling. So I'm pretty good now and I have a lot more time. And I'm also having the, I got the chance rather to be able to, you know, come up with new ideas, you know, just trust God for creativity, you know, and, you know, think about how or the next step, you know, for dear Tyler as it is. And and I just believe that I'm going to incorporate, like, in as much as I want to build that level of consistency, I would definitely have to find a month that I'll say, okay, I'm going to just take out time and do, like, a proper retreat for dear Tyler. So, um, instead of having the constant, you know, episodes um, twice every week of every month, right? A particular month will come maybe to be reduced to just an episode a week or that whole month I will just we'll go on break. Yes, we'll do something like that. I'll just go on a break. And I'll probably put it, I'll keep it, um, I'll find a way around it though. But I'm just trying to say that this was really, really helpful. And within the one month period, a lot has happened. A lot has happened. Oh, no, a lot has happened. I have stories to tell. I have things to share. Um, there's just been a lot of good things that have happened to my life recently within this one month period. And I promise you that I'm going to share. Uh, so uh, prior to the time that I took the break, we were considering a series um, tagged the other side of the story and for now I just feel led to put that on hold right to put that on hold we'll get back to it we'll definitely get back to it because there are a lot of other compelling stories um, in the Bible that I believe that we'll be able to connect with but for now uh, my heart is really leaning towards uh, another theme right another theme and so for today's episode, right, so I know that when the episode is um, meant to come out, you know, Monday, right? But then we're having this Sunday, right? I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to work on, on something for Monday so that we can, you know, continue with our standard Monday, Thursday uh, episodes, but for now today's episode is going to be or today's episode rather is titled God Adventures God Adventures so yesterday I was you know just sitting down at home after did a little bit of house cleaning washed the car I just came in and then I listened to a message by Apostle Salman and you know, I he made mention of a lot of things that reminded me of my journey with God and the time when I did meet Him. And so, probably within the week, I'll begin to share some of my stories, my Zaria stories, uh, and all. But then, he, you know, he just mentioned things about our walk with God. I think he mentioned one of the experiences that he had where he lost his phone. I think his phone or his wallet or so somewhere in Abuja and then after the bus had gone he was just praying in the spirit and then somebody just came a man limping came over and gave it to him and before he could you know tell the man thank you that the man disappeared and I remember a particular instance uh, when we were in Zaria I had come back home and I'd come back home and then the apostle was like, oh, hey, Pingang, they just stole my laptop. 
was like, oh my God. And he was like the calmest of people. He just was so calm, like just shaking his leg and smiling. And then I think it was every other person within the compound that was like panicking and trying to figure out, oh, okay, how can we get the laptop and all? And he looked at me, he said, Binga, when it happened that the spirit of, I mean, that an angel of the Lord came and stood in front of me and showed me two fingers. Right, so like the peace sign. Right? And if I can recall it, it was like that it's either that a better one is coming or that is telling me that I should be at peace. You know, and so I stayed with him for a while. We spoke, you know, and it was pretty good, not really bothered. And so I'd gone into school because back then we would um, usually go into the campus and would start, you know, maybe just having little discussions with people and then start worshipping. And then he would now come in after, um, join us in worship or he'll start counselling people and then he'll join us in the worship and then eventually teach us. So I'd gone into school um, to join the rest of the family, you know, my friends and all. And this was maybe like an hour to two hours the next thing, I got a text message from Apostle, and he was like, Binga, my laptop is back. Right? And there were just a whole lot of daring experiences. There were just beautiful experiences. I've had my own experiences too. And I realized that those moments were some of the most amazing moments in my life as a believer. Right? The The journey with God that has this anticipation of the supernatural, right? That amazing things can just happen. Things can just turn around. There was this big um, expectation for supernatural encounters. It was really, really fun. Now, one of the people that has influenced me a lot in my life, apart from Apostle Joshua Selman, right? One of the people that has really, really influenced me a lot is Pastor Bill Johnson. And I know that I've made a lot of emphasis on him uh, in a lot of the podcast episodes. And he's someone that I really believe that he would bless you. He said, he made a statement, and I'm just going to paraphrase. He said, there is no, there is no point pursuing Bible knowledge without Bible experience. Right, that one of the things that has really, really um, caught up with the Christian world with our faith is that we are so knowledgeable without the experience, right? And that's why I tag this particular episode God Adventures because when you when you understand that our Christian faith is a leap into possibilities. I know a lot of people would like to say that, oh, it's a leap into the unknown. No, it's not a leap into the unknown. It's a leap, it's a leap into possibilities. There are so many possibilities hidden in God and the potential of things that could happen to people who decide to walk in faith right, is beyond comprehension. Right? Nobody would have ever thought that man could walk on water. Jesus walks on water and the one that is daring enough to engage him experiences the very same reality that God experienced, right? I remember watching some of the videos and and I would I would try my best to because I think I need this for me. Um, I try my best to be able to get some of these videos and kind of like um, trigger some of these older memories Right, uh, because I believe that passion and um, vision have been lost for, for for many reasons. Right, that we may not be able to get into. Now, I remember one of the videos that I watched that really set me on my path to God was a video by Still Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry. I think they were interviewing some of their students, and they were talking about the the curriculum of the school. And one of the people there, one of the students there, made mention of something. He said, people say Christianity is boring. But then, like, we get to heal the sick. We get to see the cripple walk. We get to see the blind eyes open. We get to 
um, see deaf ears get open, right? We get to see different diverse types of miracles and healing to get to see people being transformed. Like how on earth is that boring? Right? Or you hear statements of Pastor Bill Johnson. He said one of the biggest questions that he usually gets asked during um, the first few days of school in the Bethel School of Ministry is whenever they're talking about healing the sick, people will be like, what if I pray for the sick and they don't get healed? And his response is, what if you pray for them and they do, right? And so something within their heart gets triggered to believe God for the impossible, right? Now, there was a, a parody kind of, no, it's not a parody, maybe just a very funny song, right, um, that I wrote one time. Is it really funny? No, there was nothing funny about the song. But I wrote the song, it's... Um, I never really completed it, but then I'll just, you know, say the words of the song. And, and I believe that it would give you a picture of something. So, <clears throat> it says, <clears throat> pardon me. Some, some say spiritually spooky. Like, excuse me, have we forgotten that our lives are now divine? We've been connected, um, we've been connected by the life of God, Right? Or does the truth about it scare us? Take for instance, being born again, is it natural? Being one with God and His Spirit, is it logical? Being friends with God, no bro, it ain't common. Time to realize the truth about our faith. Because what I see is the Jesus of the books, not reality. Seems like the church found safety in theology and not ministry. And that's hypocrisy, right? Um... And it's a fad if the world cannot experience the life of God in us, right? We, we have gotten so comfortable with knowledge as believers that we've not even, you know, we've relegated supernatural experiences. So if you even talk about supernatural experiences, the first thing they'll say, test all spirits. There is this quick defense towards, um, quick defense towards anything supernatural, anything that will cause you to exert a lot of energy to to work you know to show yourself faithful and all these are the things that we like and they all have their place but the moment you begin to talk about supernatural things healing deliverance um signs wonders right manifestations of the spirit there is a whole lot of doubt and i feel that it's an attack of the enemy upon the body of christ at this time right um Paul was telling the Corinthian church that when he came to them, paraphrasing, that he did not come with excellency or speech, but he came in demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost, right? That there must be a demonstration to these things. Now, I remember when I started out early in my faith, I was an avid believer in the healing power of God. I had so many healing testimonies, right? I just believed that I could live in perfect health. And to be honest, for like a period of close to two years i didn't take any drugs i didn't feel symptoms i was living that perfect health um scenario and and i did have my encounters with people that were sick and i prayed you know for people some people got their instant healing um some people it was a gradual process but somehow somehow there was nothing in my heart that would ever make me doubt the miraculous working power of God, especially through my hands. Like I was looking for the next sick person to pray for. I remember going to um, ABU Teaching Hospital in Shika, just moving around and then praying for people. Um, I think someone that had kidney stones prayed for the person and then the next day we heard that they were discharged. You know, it was just amazing. Um, the angelic encounters that I had, these are things, they're not, it's not just fables, right? So they're not, they're not just ideas that, you know, we come up with to kind of like sound, oh, that we're deep. No, these were things that we really experienced. I remember there was a time in Zaria, um, there was just this spirit of intercession that just broke out one night like that. And so we usually used to have this meeting, me and some of my friends, um, we gathered together just to share things about music. And um, what happened was, we, it was usually a music thing, but then we started like singing. And somehow we just got caught up in prayer. And we usually used to meet from like six to nine. 
but somehow this time we stretched from like 6 to 12 right and then we were done or seemingly we're done and as we were about rounding up another set of people were praying and I just rushed to meet them because the spirit of intercession had just fallen on me in such a great manner and then we stretched that prayer till three now one of the things that happened was when we were done with the prayer so that's a nine hour prayer stretch right and it wasn't like um oh okay we prayed for nine hours and, and it really didn't happen again but after that we were all in the chapel premises and there's a tree on in, in the chapel there and all of us this is something that we also a cloud came rested upon that tree and around the cloud was like a silver lining and then as we were leaving the chapel that's how the cloud now lifted and it left now why am i saying all of these things that when you feed your heart with the possibilities of god when you open up your heart to walk in faith with God, right? You would really, really have adventures with Him. The people that have had great and marvelous testimonies, the people that have had adventures with God are those who are daring enough to walk in faith, right? There were at least 12 disciples in the boat, but only one would ever boast of being able to walk in on water. He's the one that heard the word and believed the word and responded to the word. Did he make mistakes along the way? Yes, he did. But did he walk on water again? Yes, he did. There were people that were not part of the 12 or part of the inner carcass of Jesus, were not part of his immediate discipleship family. But because they believed the words that they heard, they entered into an adventure with God. That the disciples had to meet Jesus and said, that there are these other people, there's this other person healing the sick in your name, doing things in your name. He's not one of us. And Jesus said, no, that as long as they're not against us, as long as they're for us, we're all good, right? These are people that have been daring enough. I have been, you know, just watching um, humbly, watching each and every, you know, crusade so far, the conferences that we've had as a ministry in Koinonia. And I'm just seeing, you know, I'm remembering the, the times when we were just about 50 of us in Zaya. We just sit down on the floor while Apostle will teach and he'll keep on telling us, you know, these are the things that the Lord is showing him, you know. And, you know, seeing it happen, you know, I was just watching um, the last day of the conference in UK, how he just stood with Pastor Nat and, you know, they just showed the crowd, they showed the arena and everything. And I was like, I remember when this man said this thing and he's living it. It's his boldness to walk with God, right? Having the faith to walk with God, having hope, that expectation that the one that has called you will respond, right? And then being motivated by love. These are the things that trigger the adventure side of God or giving or the things that help you align into the things of God, right? And experiencing his adventurous hand. Now, I believe that God would help us to get back to it. For me, it's a prayer. And I was just telling God and I was like, Lord, there's so much that you've placed inside of me. There's so many possibilities, right? And I repent for limiting you for whatever reasons, right? I repent for limiting you. But Lord, it's time to take a risk again. What do I really have to lose? It's time to take a risk again. Right? If I don't take a risk with God, right, and believe Him for these things, then I'm not... Nothing really happens, right? So if I doubt God, right, um, nothing changes, right? If I believe God, then there's a possibility for things to happen. If it doesn't happen, then it won't be different from not believing. Do you understand? But the point is that there's nobody written in scripture and through um, the, the through through the course of history of people, right, that have believed God, that have not done things mighty and marvelous for him. When people, you know, stretch out in faith and do certain things, when you read the stories of people like George Muller having orphanages, building so many orphanages, never really collecting money or, you know, but then doing everything through prayer. I remember one of the stories I read about George Muller, so humbly. Um, one of the orphanages that he was part of or he had built 
did not have food for the day. And it was time for dinner and what he did was that he called all the children in that orphanage and they sat down and they were like, Papa, what are we having for dinner? And it was like, don't worry, that the Lord will provide. And he led them on the table to thank Lord, thank the Lord for provision. And then guess what? As they were done the prayer, they heard a knock on the door. And who was it? It was a man with a wheelbarrow of food, saying that the Lord had instructed him to bring the food to George Mola and his people. It's really, really mind-blowing. And you see, let me, let me probe us a little bit. If this doesn't excite you, right, then there is a problem. If the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear about the adventures of God or the adventures of faith, right, or the miraculous, if the first thing that comes to your mind is to question its validity, right, then it means that your faith has really been tampered with. Now, am I saying that do not be discerning? Absolutely not. Be discerning. Very, very important, right? Praying for the spirit of discernment to understand what is God and what the enemy is just trying to replicate. But that if your first response is doubt, if your first response is always doubt at the workings of God or the workings of miracles, then your faith has been tampered with. Now, this period, there are a lot of things that I am believing God for, right? I'm believing God for so many things, Tyler. I told myself that, man, being we're going to take this risk. We are taking this risk. What's the worst that could happen? Let's take this risk. Let's see what God can do, right? Let's be, enter into this adventurous lifestyle with God. Not just this lifestyle that, you know, circulates around certain routines or dogmas, right? That just gives you the feeling of having a relationship with the Lord, right? But nothing really tangible happening. I told myself that I'm moving from Bible knowledge to Bible experience. That if I read it in scripture, I'm going to allow my life be the canvas that the Lord will display its possibilities once again. God is looking for people to rewrite history on, to let the world know that there is so much more in Him. There is so much more in Him. Faith adventures, God adventures. There's so many stories that I could share, and I will do my best to share it with us, right? But then think about every single thing, Tyler, that has happened to you because of your faith walk, right? And then maybe along the line, some certain things, you started building doubt towards certain things. Just know that it's an attack of the enemy. There are possibilities hidden in God and they are only revealed by those who are willing to take the risk to leave that boat to hear the word of the master telling them to come and then for them to take that step. Oh no, I'm going to, I'm believing God for many things. And I believe that this very platform called Dear Tyler, right, will be a platform where I would share the testimony and it will blow our minds, right? I'm going to believe God back again for the healing ministry because it's a very pivotal part of my life, right? A very pivotal part. So the healing ministry, prophetic songs, right there's just so much so much the word ministry right into the, um, engaging the prophetic the divine you know working of miracles there's just so much i believed once upon a time and I, I feel a little bit sad that i'm saying it but i'm glad because i've repented once upon a time i believed that every gift of the spirit was at work in my life one of the things i told the lord is that and I wrote it in a song. He said, Lord, if you're looking for someone to reveal you, I'm your man, right? In whatever aspect you want to. So everybody was like saying, oh, yeah, you may have the gift of wisdom. Some people have the gift of the word of knowledge, you know, the gift of this. I just told God, I said, Lord, whatever way you want to express yourself, I'm available. And at a particular point in my life, right, I had experienced each and every one of those nine gifts, each and every one of them down to the interpretation of tongues, speaking a new tongue, speaking in another language, not just a spiritual language, but another language. Right? So I'd experienced each and every one of them. God adventures exist, but it's going to take faith in God. Right? It's going to be built on expectations that you call hope. 
and it's going to be driven by love. These three are the three keys that lead people to God adventures, right? And I hope that within the coming days, we get to share, you know, a lot of these um, adventures, you know, just little things that would, you know, spur up our faith and teach us, you know, about God and help us to navigate our ways through life, right? And also ultimately be a blessing to our generation, right? So it's really nice to be back, right? And I really do hope that this episode did bless you, right? So this is me signing out. Remember that I love you, Tyler. I believe in you. And I am always, always rooting for you. Bye.